Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is the Busty Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian! For today's episode, we will be discussing Season 3, Episode 6, Red Sky at Morning. Written by Lawrence Andreas. Directed by Cliff Bowl. Both of these people we're seeing for yeah. the first time. And the only time. The only time for both of them? Yeah, which is interesting. I don't know why that is. Like, I'd yeah. say that this is not the worst episode in any way. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Lawrence Andrews worked on how to get away with murder. He sort of seems like hot shit, so maybe they just couldn't afford him again. Oh, uh, yeah, perhaps so. On to greater things, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, so what's our pre discussion thoughts? Like, I mean, not a fan of misogyny, but love to see a Bella. <laughs> I think those are basically <laughs> it. I can't help but think about that post that's like, for this week's episode, Dean will be talking to someone who will embody his childhood trauma, blah, blah, blah. Uh Uh-huh. Meanwhile, Sam is gonna go talk to the MILF. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. This is true. Sam will be talking to the MILF. He literally talked to that male. Yeah, well, I guess she was a, a middle, f- uh, a mother he did not like to fuck. Yeah, and it was it was c- quite upsetting to see him be harassed so much yeah, during no, the episode. Yeah, it wasn't very funny. Yeah, the episode treats it like it's funny, and Dean treats it like it's funny, but like... I don't know, it's just, it's bad. Yeah, to like watch. maybe you shouldn't grab people's asses when they're not comfortable with it. Revolutionary yeah. thought. <laughs> Poor Sam. But, uh, yeah. So before going into this episode, what did you know about it? Um, honestly, nothing like from the title. I think this episode and Bad Day at Black Rock both just have really long titles that have nothing at all to do with the actual episode. Like, I definitely, like, as soon as I watched it, I definitely recognized scenes. Mostly the Dean coming down the stairs looking like (laughs) shit in his tuxedo (laughs) scene. In his ill-fitting suit. Yeah. Which, you know, I really appreciate that they were like, ooh, ladies, look at this. Meanwhile, he has never looked worse in his life. <laughs> but... He looks like a stumpy little guy. <laughs> like, he looks so short. He does. And I support the short king. But, like, yeah. the fact that we're supposed to go, ooh, is so funny. <laughs> right, like, look at this raging piece of red meat and masculinity. Like, Whatever, he looks awful. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't really know anything about the episode. Besides that the writer is black because I saw that on a post about how there are no supernatural writers who are people of color except for like this one guy this one time. Mm. Yeah. I actually remember this episode pretty well. I remember the... I remember pretty much everything that happens, Hmm. and also, I remember the title, because Hmm. I don't even know why. I think I just remember the Bella episodes quite well, because this is also my reaction during our last Bella app, so, Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I I was very fond of Bella when I was watching Supernatural the first time. So yeah. that's no surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... Shall we start the episode? Sure. I hate it here. <laughs> I already <laughs> said that. But I'm just reiterating it. I hate it here. Yeah, I think this this episode did get one of my I hate Supernatural so much it's unreal discord Exactly. Messages. Which happens, I think, once every three episodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Approximately. Yeah. Oh, also, this episode they mentioned Castiel. They did you, do. Did you catch that? Did yes, catch I did that? catch that. Of course I caught that. And I God. felt happiness bloom in my heart. <laughs> For the first time in years. <laughs> exactly. So we start with this young woman. She's running. In the uh, dead in the, of night. In the dead of night, middle of the street. She's not even running on the side. What's, what's the pavement? What's that called for mm. you? Side road. Sidewalk. Uh, Sidewalk. She's not even running on the sidewalk. She's just running in the middle of the street, which I respect. Yeah, um, she's wearing like a sports bra that is far more bra looking than the average sports bra, I'd say. Yeah. I think people just really do wear that, right? Well, not For, not here, like, but... Not in the dead of night. Uh, yeah, perhaps. She stops for some water. And she looks, she's like drinking from the water fountain and she looks up and she sees a ship. Yeah, it's spooky. It's a spooky mm-hmm. ship. You know what I said like a couple episodes back? I don't know if you remember this and I don't even know if I actually did say it. But I said something okay. in the lines of, um, I want them to do an episode on a haunted ship, but I think it's gonna oh, be yeah. way too expensive. Yeah, this is how they did it. She comes home and she's showering because of course she is. Yeah, and like, she's like just looking up with her like mouth yeah! open in a sexy way. Like just like just glugging all that shower water as you know women often do. The way she was like, like um, wiping her hair down you know like the shower yeah. motion that you see in television except that's the only thing she was doing and this is a right. long scene. no shampoo no shampoo no soap no anything <laughs> no conditioner no nothing she's just wiping her hair up and down just and down not even doing. up because if no, you did yeah. it up it would get all like frizzy and be unattractive <laughs> It's so funny because she, like, okay, here's what happens. She's showering, right? And Mm. then she hears some noise, so she checks it out. And then she goes back to the shower and continues doing the exact same thing (laughs) that she was doing from before. And this keeps on going and going and going for so long that it's impossible to not notice. At some point, I was like, are they reusing this clip? What's happening? (laughs) And uh, we cut to outside, and we see her, like, scream and, like, get pushed against the door of the shower. And then, like, Mm. it ends with her hand sliding down the shower door. Yeah. Which is, like, I don't like that. Me neither. Because, well, I mean, I think we've said this often in the show or at least we've said it at some point but like Mm. the whole concept of when a woman dies she has to die in the shower (laughs) is so fucking stupid yeah Yeah. she has to die in a bathtub and like Mm. every like the other man who die in this episode don't die like that it's just her Yeah, I mean, at least one of the men who dies is shirtless, hashtag equality. (laughs) But yeah, he's not in the shower, and he didn't have to be all sexy and weird before he died. 
Ugh. Yeah. yeah, no, as soon as I saw her in that sports bra that's bra-shaped instead of binder-shaped, I was like, this is not gonna end up well, is it? <laughs> and it did not. Yeah. At least we didn't have to see her, like, dead body, like, naked with the spiders around it like we saw in Bugs or whatever. So, we cut to the Impala, where Sam and Dean are about to have a fight, um, and Dean's like, you gonna tell me, like, what it is you've been keeping from me? Uh, Sam, like jokes happy Purim, which is, you know, more Jewish Winchester's, like, evidence, so good for them. Anyway, so, Dean reveals that he has noticed that there's a bullet missing from the cult, so Sam has discharged it at some point. Uh... And Dean's upset that Sam went after the Crossroads demon that he made the deal with. But, like, it seems like the main thing that he's worried about is that Sam could have gotten himself killed. Which was a, it was kind of sweet. I did go all a little at that. Um, Sam says that he I mean, shot her because... Does it feel yeah. like the hmm. reason why he's mad? I mean... <laughs> Maybe it's I, not I the you reason. Mean. I think he's just, like, upset that, like, of the hiding and stuff. And, like, he could have gotten killed, blah, blah, blah. And then he immediately goes, what happened to the demon? You killed her. And now we'd have no lead. I think That's true. There's, there's, there's a feeling here that Dean, even though he's denying it, still, still feels a little bit like, oh, I hope I can get out of this deal. Yeah, definitely. Sam says that he shot her because she was a smartass? What's Hell wrong yeah. with this man? Why is he using the logic I use in, like, my kills in D&D in, like, real actual life? <laughs> God. You yeah, play D&D. Um, is that for uh, him? Yeah, I mean, I guess I use D&D to just mean tabletop role-playing in general. Mm. Like, the current campaign I'm playing with my ex-fiancee and our friends is Masks, so that's not the D&D mechanic. But, yeah. Alright. So... <laughs> oh, oh, you said that to be judgmental! I understand now. <laughs> I, say, I said it to be a cunt. <laughs> Slay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, right, you're right. Dean has a little hope, it seems, because he goes like, "So, does that mean that I'm out of my deal then?" And Sam's like, "Uh, no. I probably would have mentioned it if that was true. I do want to live in the universe where Sam gets Dean out of the deal and then just doesn't tell him. I think <laughs> it'd be fun. Um." Yeah, Sam says that he doesn't know who actually holds the contract, and Dean does this whole, like, it'd be great to figure out who it was. I wonder who our best lead was. Oh, wait, you shot her. Um, yeah, and then Sam does this whole, like, like, I'm not sorry for doing it. You're my brother. I'm gonna try to save you no matter what. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. Sure. The thing is, They've been at it for six episodes, and yeah. nothing has happened so far. And I am beginning to feel like they're Maybe just... Maybe they're not gonna get out of it? Maybe Dean might actually die? No, no, no. I'm beginning to feel <laughs> okay, like yeah. they're running out. They're, like, running out of ideas to put in the episodes for brother conflict, and they're like, let's yeah. just milk this one. Let's just do this one over and over again for 16 episodes. <laughs> and that will be the entire season. And I get that Supernatural does that. And I get that like they have to keep doing that. Because this is a TV show right. that is like weekly. Yeah, and some people but, weren't watching yeah. last week's episode. Yeah, exactly. But part of me is like, okay, we get it. We get it. I get yeah. it. 
I think maybe also this might be them realizing, like, oh, in season two we, like, totally dropped the overarching plot until the end. So I think that the solution for season three is just to have a case and then have every other moment just be them being like, hey, remember the overarching plot? Let's talk about that. So Sam and Dean enter this house and there's right. an old lady. We don't lady. get a city for this Oh yeah, we for don't. this episode, which is odd. I feel like usually we get a city. Also, like I think you know, it's near a port. Is that a port? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. So like, it's gonna be reasonable that they, they're like, oh, it's near a body of water. Mm-hmm. So it'll be easy to have a city, or maybe that yeah. makes it more difficult. I'm not sure, but. Mm. So they enter this house, and there's an old lady, and she's like, Why are you guys here? I already talked to the other detectives. And they're like, she's no, 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 no. so chipper her... for someone whose niece just died. It's her niece? Yeah. I know it's her granddaughter. No, it's her niece. That's actually wild. Like... Yeah. Why is she so happy? <laughs> I don't know. I think the implication is that Bella slash Alex has been, like, doing seances where she's been talking to her niece so she doesn't feel that she's, like, lost her yeah, entirely, yeah, yeah. maybe? <laughs> the way they said that was so funny. But you'll get into later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um... She she's talking about uh, who these guys are like who are you guys and they're like oh we're with the sheriff's office we're different detectives so like just talk to us like what happened uh uh-uh. and she says like she drowned in the shower so that's a clue for us that she the way she died was drowning but like how mm. could she drown in the shower and. Sam starts asking about behavior during the days before the accident. And then, and the lady goes, Oh, are you guys working with Alex? And Dean latches onto this and is, and is like, Oh, yeah, sure, we're working with Alex. Alex and us, co workers. Like, he- yeah, yeah, we're this super, home. super tight. My brother's gonna have yeah. a sex dream about her in future episodes. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And she says, like, I thought the case was closed. What's what's the deal? And Sam and Dean says, Oh, it's not actually closed and we're still investigating it. And she mentions that Sheila saw, like, the ship. And, oh, and this starts a thing in the episode where she's, like, really flirting it up with Sam. Mm. And by flirting it up, I mean, like, a sexual like harassment. harassing him. Yeah. Like, here, it's like, oh, don't call me Mrs. Case. It's just Miss Case. Which is, like, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. It's, it's, it's forward, but it's fine. And then she starts caressing his fingers which is yeah. weird. And then yeah. that's 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 it for this scene. And we'll get more later. Mm-hmm. I feel so bad yeah. for Sam. Yeah, it's, it's very sad. He's not having a good time this episode. Oh, also, yeah, Alex, specifically Gert, says that Alex thinks that it's a ghost ship. So... Yeah. So that's... A hint that this Alex might be a hunter, but obviously it's Bella, because yay, Bella. So, right, so Sam and Dean are outside, um, and, right, so Dean's teasing Sam a bit about the Miss Case thing, and I think in this scene it's not entirely clear how Sam feels about her, because, like, Dean's like, oh, haha, like you're saying she's not crazy because you're sticking up for your girlfriend, you cougar hound. Um, 
And, like, Sam seems all right with the teasing. He's like, bite me. And Dean's like, okay, now she bites you first. And, like, they seem to be laughing enough, but I guess it's just because she doesn't really seem like a threat to Sam quite yet. The finger caressing is not as bad as later things. Uh, so yeah, they wonder if Alex might be a hunter. Uh, and then Sam does a bit of a lore dump where apparently the ship is sighted every 37 years and then a bunch of people drown on land and they all see this ship out in the bay. Sam says that his next step is to figure out what boat it is but there were apparently over 150 boats matching that description that got wrecked off this coast so yeah not doing well also sometime during this dean uses the phrase you pucker up and kiss your ass goodbye which i actually thought was kind of fun <laughs> um but they go to where the impala was parked and it is not there and dean starts freaking he goes like he's sam where's my car somebody <laughs> stole my car he yeah no he's bent over he is hyperventilating he's not doing well it is a fairly humorous scene but also like if your house was your home and also all you had left of your father who died i would I, I understand why he is doing this but it is very very funny especially because like like when he's being really angry he's like gesticulating a lot and sort of the tails of his suit coat are like flapping <laughs> around with his arm motions yeah. so he just looks like a silly little penguin man yeah and he looks so yeah. short this episode. He does, this entire episode. Sam's, like, going over and telling Dean to calm down, but, like, he's being quite supportive about it, just, like, patting him, going, like, take it easy, so he's not really making fun of him, which, you know, I guess is rights for neurodivergent Winchesters and helping each other cope. Um, so, uh, we hear someone coming up and it's bella it's bella she Ooh. looks so good this episode you guys she's wearing like this leather jacket but it's like brown then like not like regular leather jacket brown it looks really good on her um you know her earrings match her necklace her eyes are shining she is beautiful and radiant and we love to see her so yeah she's all like Oh, sorry, was that car yours? I had it towed. So real. So real. <laughs> um, and both of them are, like, very upset to see her here. Uh, and Sam realizes that Bella is Alex, and Bella's, like, it reveals that what she's been doing is just, like, basically scamming old women oh um, yeah but the way she said yes, it is no, it's like... great she says that she sells them charms and performs seances so that they can commune with their dead cats and dean says oh and it's like all a con and none of it is real and she goes the comfort i provide them is very real she's so real god she's so iconic she is so iconic like, I I support women's rights, but moreover, I support women's wrongs, etc. God bless. Yeah. Also, like, of the things that she could be doing with her skill set, like, the fact that she's bothered, well, she, at least from, I think she's lying here, but the fact that in this universe where she's telling the truth, she's bothering to, instead of, like, selling things for millions of dollars she's just going to old women being like and mr tuna says that he's having a great time in cat heaven it's so <laughs> fun to me i think she's telling the truth because like miss case huh. doesn't 
like she actually believes her and she says oh, that yeah. she has brought her uh, like Bella's brought her great comfort and Bella mm-hmm. like at the end they're like obviously like friends in a way like right. they know yeah. each other so I think she's telling the truth here that like she does scam these old women <laughs> that's true but I feel like that's like her side quest cause she's mostly here for the hand of glory yeah I like to believe that she does this for multiple old women. Yeah, yeah. So, Sam had this very small crime, like, honestly not even a big deal, goes, How do you sleep at night? Girl, I don't get it. The, yeah, the and, thing is, like, every uh-huh. single psychic in this universe, aside from, like, Missouri, is the exact yeah. same way. Yeah. I think her crime is knowing that it's true and yet. Right, like she could possibly actually commune with their dead cat, but she isn't bothering. (laughs) Yeah, perhaps. (laughs) Right, she does have her Ouija board that she used to talk to the spirits who'd been killed by the rabbit's foot. So yeah, she could totally actually talk to these women's dead cats. She just isn't bothering to... So, yeah, so Bella has her iconic line of on silk sheets, rolling naked in money. Uh, and she's surprised that Sam is judgmental because she only expected this from Dean. But Sam goes like, you shot me. And Bella goes, I barely <laughs> grace you. <laughs> I I laughed out loud when he said, like, you shot me, because I didn't expect them to, like, call back to the last episode that she was in. Like, you know, Supernatural episodes are so disjointed that any callback is, like, takes me aback. Mm -hmm. This was fun. Yeah, yeah. I also wonder if there are more callbacks in this one because it's a guest writer. I feel like if you're a guest writer, you're like, oh, I have to do a good job and I have to, like, watch all the episodes and do my research. Meanwhile, if you're, like, Robert Singer, you're just like, (laughs) what the fuck ever. (laughs) Maybe. Yeah. So, um, they question her about the ghost ship thing. And she's just like, well, I'm mad at you for telling Gert that the case is still open because now she wants actual answers instead of just paying me. Um, so just stay away from me. Um, plus, like, your car, like, something bad is gonna happen if they find the one million guns you have in the trunk, so you should go get that. And she says ciao to say goodbye, uh... And she walks away. She is iconic. She is the moment, etc. And Dean goes, so "Can fun. I shoot her?" And Sam goes, "Not in public." I have they the like, thing joked is, like, about killing real like human people before, like ever in this show. I don't think so. Th- they're so mean to Bella. Yeah. Like maybe I'm biased because I like her. <laughs> But also, like, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm not. bisexual I that? because I like her. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, but, yeah. like, they're so mean to her and they it are. upsets me. And, like, right. to- even towards the end of the episode, she's like, yeah, I stole it. And they were like, this is the worst thing that you could have ever done. And it's like, Calm down. Calm down. There are like seen... murderers out there. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. Their disdain for her is definitely completely disproportional from any like metric of how bad of a person she is or how dirty she's done any of them. Yeah. And also like how they react to previous people. Yeah. Who, you know, are uh-huh. are in this vein. Right. Anyway. Yeah, but I don't... I wonder... I feel like she's also being set up as a clear foil for Dean. So, like, 
I, maybe this is like their shoddy attempt to just show conflict between a foil and Dean and like make it like about like self-hatred because there's a lot of like pointed lines about like takes yeah, one to no one like... and like we have the same damage where it's like maybe they're trying to say like they just hate on her so bad because she's like Waluigi just like Dean. Dean. Real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Waluigi Dean. <laughs> She's, if anyone is no, Waluigi. No, Dean is Waluigi. Yeah, right. Dean is Waluigi. Yeah. So. so so Sam and Dean arrive at this crime scene where Bella is like posing as a reporter and trying to interview this one guy. Uh, and, yeah. Oh, also we see that we see his brother be killed like, right before this scene, where he's yeah. near his bathtub, and then, like, someone comes out of the bathtub and drowns him. Oh, yeah! Somebody does come out of the bathtub. That was funny. <laughs> 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 I, A man I just died, it. Gray. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, Bella's interviewing, posting as a reporter... And she's like, I'm so sorry for your loss. <laughs> you know how she is. Yeah. And uh, Sam and Dean come up and are like, ahem, ahem, I think you should leave the guy alone, Miss Reporter. The guy's been through enough. You know, they're being so mean and they're shooting like looks at each other. But Bella does concede and she walks away and Dean goes, they're just like roaches, aren't they? <laughs> and Bella looks menacingly at him. And then Sam starts asking about the ship, and the guy starts describing the ship, like, with full intensity. Mm. Okay, you've seen the ship, right? Yeah. How would you describe this ship? It was a boat, but it had <laughs> sails, so I guess it was a ship. That's how I would describe it. And it had sails and they're big, potentially masts. Is that the term? I I would say they had big masts. I think those are what those, the big wood sticks that hold up the sails are called. Yeah, and it's a big ship. And that's all I would say. But this guy is like, here's some details. Old Yankee yeah. Clippers, smuggling vessel, rackish topsail, barkentine rigging, angel figurehead on the boat. Yeah. And it's like, Sam was like, that's way too much detail for a ship that your brother saw. And he's like, well, I saw it too. And even that's then I was like... too much detail for a ship <laughs> that you saw. <laughs> exactly. I wish they were like, yeah. I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a boat head, you know? <laughs> yeah. I... Love Are you ship. also currently trying to figure out how to make a joke about a ship with an angel on it, like, that leads <laughs> to the punchline Destiel? Because I'm not coming up with the right sentence, but I would like to do that. Well, the the fact that we kept on saying ship over and over again, it did cross my mind, but yeah. alas. We're, alas. You know what? We're not professional podcasters. That's we're true. not doing advertisements. We're, we don't... We're... <laughs> We're not yeah, but if anyone enough. wants to sponsor us, like, hit us up. <laughs> if, if somebody decides to sponsor us big time, I will write down jokes before we record <laughs> the podcast. <laughs> I promise. I will be extra funny. And yeah. my chair will not be creaking all the time like it does. Yeah, I won't yell at my roommate Evan in the background. <laughs> And I will cut it off when it happens instead of leaving it in the recording. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, Sam and Dean are like, ooh, you saw the ship too? All right, we'll keep in touch. And then it cuts to them loading up guns in the middle of the day in the middle of the road. Yep. Like, right next to where the cops were just then. It's and so like the cops because... are after them because Bella was talking to them and point talking about them and pointing at them and going like I don't think those are real FBI agents. Yeah. What's the deal? What are they doing? 
But yeah, they're and uh, Bella starts saying like, "Oh, yeah." She just shows up behind them, like over their shoulders. It's a great shot. I like. Yeah. I like that she keeps showing up to bother them. Like they're like yeah. the funny little stray cats that she found in her neighborhood, and she's coming over to take photos of them for Instagram and disrupts their mice hunting. Yeah. And uh, she asks, like, what they're still doing, and Sam and Dean are like, the guy saw the ship, we have to save him. And Bella is of the opinion that it's not useful or worth it to try to save the guy because he's cannon fodder. He's dead anyway. So -hmm. what's the point? And Sam and Dean are like, you're so heartless, soulless... (laughs) bitch and she's yeah like, like i have a loaded gun right now why are you talking to us we're gonna murder you literally in broad daylight for being slightly unsympathetic for two seconds yeah and bella is like well it's better to just focus on figuring out what the boat is and like getting to the bottom of the situation to and the she's root right of it. yeah she's right and the episode agrees that she's right. Yeah, because they kill the guy anyway. The guy dies, yeah. But, yeah, but they never they never say Bella was right. Yeah. They're, they but just she won't. was. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, Dean is like... It's, it's weird to me because what she's saying makes sense. Yeah. Right? But right. Dean is so mad. Dean is He's so mad. so mad. Like, He's like, he just wh- how did he even- that she, like, wasn't, like, it makes more sense to focus on the big picture, however, I will cry every day of- at the thought of this guy dying. Like, is that, she's, the- just the fact that she doesn't feel bad that this guy is gonna die? Is that what he's so upset about? Because, like, I don't think that matters. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, before they go, Dean goes, like, how do you get like this? Did daddy give you not enough hugs or something? And Bella yeah. goes, so, I don't know. Your daddy give you enough? Don't you dare look down your nose at me. You're no better than I am. Right. So and the, the there's line, yeah, Bella's, yeah, Bella's background that we learn later is that her parents were, were they sexually abusive as well as like physically and emotionally? This is the one thing about Bella that I don't remember. Like, I remember the scene where they reveal it, but I don't remember the details because I think I was like, oh, this sucks. I'm not going to think about this anymore. Yeah. So I don't I don't actually know. I don't remember. Right. But yeah, like, I feel like in any situation where her parents were abusive, that is not a good line to... Yeah, but I think it's on purpose. Yeah, it's on purpose. Yeah. But yeah, especially if her father was sexually abusive. That would be rough. Yeah. Anyway, Bella continues on and she says, like, you do this job for vengeance and obsession and you're a stone throws away from being a serial killer. So I on the other job. She says, like, I on the other hand have a job. Well, (laughs) good for her. And also, I like, I do my job and I get paid for it and that's it. So I'm faring much healthier than you guys are yeah and sam is like why don't you just leave we got work to do (laughs) in that exact voice yeah bella says well you're she says you're over two and it took me so long to understand what the fuck he was saying oh yeah she was like yeah you're over two so bang up job so far she's super fun like this entire episode she's super fun and love her uh sam and dean they're parked outside this guy whose brother died's house um this guy's name is peter i guess but i did not notice that the whole episode um so sam's researching their backgrounds uh both brothers don't really have a criminal record. Um, six years ago, their dad died and they inherited $112 million. Um, and 
yeah, there, Sam's wondering what the connection between them and Sheila is, and why the ghost went after them. Uh, and Peter notices that they're parked outside, and he's like, why are you guys here? Why are you watching me? He says, you guys aren't cops. Not dressed like that. Not in that crappy car. <laughs> so real. And Dean's like, whoa, no need to get nasty. Um, yeah. So Sam says that, oh, we're just undercover. Like, like we, th we think you're in danger. Let's just talk about it. And... Peter is like, no, get away from me, and he gets into his car and starts driving away. I guess, I guess we're supposed to realize later that he was acting, like, we're supposed to go, oh, he was acting weird because he thought that, like, people were after him for killing his dad, right? But, like, I think no. this is a normal reaction. No, I don't think so. Okay. I think this is just normal. Just yeah. the normal reaction. Okay. So, yeah. um, he's, He gets, like, five feet in the car, and then it breaks down. Mm hmm And Sam and Dean, are, they're not that far away from him, right? Like... Yeah. It took them but so long. It took them so long to run at towards his car, which was like How we consider that it's their fault that this guy's dead. <laughs> yeah, it's literally their fault that this guy's dead because they ran they like slow jogged over to the car and by the time they got to the car, this ghost who looks like a stereotypical pirate, I think, has Choke drowned him to death inside his car. Yeah. Whoops. Whoops. Yeah. The effect is pretty good. The guy is like vomiting out the water. Yeah, it does look pretty neat. I think the special effects yeah. this episode in general were quite good. Uh, it was no. a bit hit or miss. Mm. I think the practical effects were good. Yeah, yeah. That's true. The other effects were, like, a bit hit or miss. Yeah. Though, I mean, I honestly thought that the effect when, at the end, when the ghost disappears was, like... I mean, it was a lot better than most ghost disappearing effects, at least. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how it is with ghosts disappearing. They're always bad. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite one is still the one where she gets, like, sucked up to hell. And it looks exactly <laughs> like the Castiel empty one. I think that was like the first episode of the yeah, show. Right? It was, yeah, it was the that one. That was and so white. funny. That was so funny. It was. Yeah. The next scene we have Sam and Dean um like in the car again and Sam is moping and Dean is like yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say it. You can't save everyone and Sam is like Okay, does that make you feel better now that you said it? And Dean is like, no. And Sam goes, yeah, me too. It just feels like I can't save anybody anymore. It's something like that. It's so corny. <laughs> it is very, very corny. I it's think so it corny. like some of it is like Jared Padalecki's acting choices. Because like for the next like three scenes or so, like he's trying to show Sam being shaken up by, like, this man's death. But, like, he does yeah. that by just sort of having him look, like, constipated but angry about it. <laughs> right, like, I think the makeup team sort of puts some dark shadows under his eyes to, like, really bring home that he's upset. But, like, like, he, he looks silly. He looks silly. Yeah, so we are at this house that they're squatting in. Mm. And as they're sitting, uh, Bella knocks, and she comes in, and she's like, wow, you guys are squatting for real? Charming. This is her only crime. <laughs> yeah. And she asks, like, what happened with the guy you were watching last night? And they're, like, completely quiet, and she goes, that well, huh? 
and Dean is like very mad. Like, if you say I told you so, I'll start swinging. Yeah. Yeah, and Bella goes like, well, let's just have a heart to heart. And Dean goes, if you even have a heart, he's oh, really right. What's going, going hard. On? <laughs> it's so funny because saying it consecutively like the way we are like really makes you <laughs> realize like how much they're doubling down on like everything Bella says I'm gonna rebut with like a snarky comment about how evil she is <laughs> cause she's an evil evil woman <laughs> oh god yeah. bless and basically she says I've identified the ship and it's the Espiritu Santo. I love that. And it's uh, there was a time when a sailor was accused of treason, and he was tried in a kangaroo court and hanged. I have a question. Yeah. What does kangaroo court mean? This is a great question, and I'm going to redirect that question to DuckDuckGo.com. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I know what it means, but, like, why it means. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, why is it called kangaroo court? Why called... Yeah. Maybe maybe it has something to do with Australia. Let's, let's see oh. what... Oh! Um... Oh. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I don't know. People just seem to say that they don't... No, except it's probably just about how, like, the court is sort of slapdash, so it's, like, an animal in the wild. And also another theory is that kangaroos are quick and unpredictable. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going with the Australia thing. I think that's more fun. Yeah. Yeah. And he was 37 when he died, which kind of explains the 37-year gaps between the deaths. Mm. Which is like, they've never done this before in Supernatural. Like, he was 50 years old, so every 50 <laughs> years someone dies. Like, it's never like that, right? This is the very first one. So I thought yeah, it was fun that they were, it was like funny. It was mm-hmm. funny that they were like, and this episode, it's gonna be 37 years because he's 37 years old! <laughs> yep. Yeah. And, yeah, they, like, showed pictures, and Sam recognizes that uh, this was the guy who they saw the other day with the guy who died, and he was missing a hand, and the reason for that is the sailor's body was cremated, which is fascinating. Cause they don't they just toss that shit yeah, in the I ocean? They just toss them in the ocean. But I but guess before, it'd be too hard for them to find the body from the ocean, and yeah, you're right. Burn it. They would be that would stump the audience, mm. so they didn't do it. Mm. So, but before. They did that. They cut off his hand first to make a hand of glory. <laughs> oh, oh! Gonna... This is when I sent. I hate supernatural so much. It's unreal in the Discord. Why? When when Dean at Dean's line. Oh, okay. He says, like, a hand of glory. I think I got one of those in the end of my time massage last week. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I completely forgot about that line. <laughs> but That's good. I was you probably say... live a better life than I do because you forgot about that line. Yeah. yeah. I, I, do we even I have to say... unpack that? I don't even know if we no, have to right, unpack whatever. it. No, it's whatever. Yeah. I mean, it just is what it is. <laughs> and by <laughs> it's what it is I mean it's a horrible thing but like I, I think we've talked about this in depth like a couple episodes back so yeah no just yeah just go go re-listen to our Tall Tales episode we will <laughs> never talk about the topic of our the title of our show ever again because we already <laughs> talked about it that one time <laughs> 
you have to have listened to every single episode of the show to understand every single episode of the show. Yeah, that was a really important part of Bad Pod Canon, and you should be ashamed if you haven't listened to that part. <laughs> Uh, Sam reprimands Dean, and he's like, Dean, this is a very serious occult object. It's very powerful. And... I was being so mean to Sam in this episode. (laughs) His his line about how he can't save anybody wasn't, like, the worst thing ever. I did like that, like, that he says it by cutting Dean off in a sentence, which doesn't happen often in Supernatural, because in TV shows... People say their full sentences, and they respond to the full sentences. Like, that was a good move. But yeah, no, Sam is, Sam, is, Sam is not getting too many points this episode. Dean is getting negative points this episode, though. <laughs> so, like, honestly, we should clown on Dean more. Yeah. And anyway, the hand counts his remains, so they need to find it and burn it. And Bella knows where it is. It's in the Sea Pines Museum. It's a macabre bit of maritime history. Yeah. And I'm surprised says, that Sam wouldn't have figured this out already if it was, like, in a local museum. Like, you'd think that'd be one of the first places you hit up for research. Anyway, Bella says, I need help. And mm. Sam goes, what kind of help? And... Dun dun dun! Uh, we cut to the house, but later that night, and Bella is waiting downstairs, and she looks very good. She's wearing the, like, black dress that every single slightly I evil know. or slightly hot woman on Supernatural wears, but, like, she looks like really Sarah good Wardis. in it. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah wore this. Yeah, Sarah wore this, like, I think, like, Half of the Crossroads demons wore this. Tessa wore something quite similar. But Bella looks really good. Plus she has, like, like a necklace that has, like, just a lot of gems on it. And I like the shape of it. It looks very good with her collar line. So Bella's yelling upwards to Dean, like, going, like, Like, why are you taking so long? Dean says, I'm so not okay with this. Um, And Bella says, what are you, a woman? (laughs) Uh, Okay, two two things Bella has has done wrong this episode, I suppose. Yeah, I think think this is trans-on-trans violence where she's misgendering Dean on purpose. Um, so, yeah, she tells him to come down, and there's, like, a, this, there's, like, this music that plays when Dean yeah. comes downstairs, and the transcript says that this sounds like the James Bond theme tune, but, you know, I've never engaged in that media, so I don't know how accurate that is. Um, and it, like, does, like, a pan up yeah, like on he him. looks so bad. And Bella's <laughs> like being like Bella's like basically like gagging herself with how much she wants to suck his dick, apparently. But he he looks like shit. Like we've already said this, but he looks so bad. He looks it's awful. It's so funny. It's such a funny scene. Yeah, I just Right, like, I'm assuming, like, what what do you think was going on? Like, they were like, well, I believe that women who are attracted to men are more attracted to them when they are in suits, so we're just gonna say that in a tuxedo, he is so, so hot, even though he looks like shit? Like, he looks like he's, I like, mean, going to his high school is prom. Tux? How different is a tux from a suit? I think there's, like, more satin on it, but it's, like, not that different. He has a bow tie instead of, like, a, like, a hanging tie. A tie, tie. Yeah. Yeah, which... You should have worn a cravat. (laughs) Yeah. If he'd worn a cravat, maybe he would have been hot. I mean, I don't think he would have, but it would have been better. He says, when this is over, we should really have angry sex. (laughs) 
Dean's reaction to this is like, like, it's very long. It's like 10 whole seconds of him being like, hmm, well, no, but hmm, well, no. <laughs> right, he's yeah. just very uncomfortable, but clearly sort of into it. And then he says, yeah. don't objectify me. <laughs> God. I, right, so, like, I'm assuming, like, what is, what is going on here is that the writer's making fun of feminism? Is that what's going on in that sentence? Like, it's a really <laughs> funny <laughs> sentence, but I, I do wonder what the motivation behind it is. Uh, I don't think it's, like, making fun of feminism. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I just think it's a funny line. It is a really funny line. It's it's good. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, yeah, they go to the museum. It's Bella and Dean walk in, and Bella's like, Okay, you're chewing gum, which you shouldn't be doing. Also, can you just fucking act like you've been here before? And Dean, you know, is yeah. upset at this, takes out his gum... And he sticks it under this thing. It's like a. How would you describe it? It's like a silver bowl. I the transcript says that it's a flowing champagne fountain. Yeah. Yeah. And they're doing a fancy event. Oh my god! I just I just realized they're doing Mm. a fake dating. Yeah, they are. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah. (laughs) Good for them. Yeah. Oh, earlier they mentioned that, like, Sam has a date. And yeah. the date is Ms. Case. Case. And Sam's not doing uh, well. Like, yeah, like, Sam is there and she's like, uh, he, he's offered champagne. And he's like, remember, we're on business. And he's like, business can be pleasure, right? It's so uncomfortable. Mm. I feel so bad for Sam. Yeah. Yeah, and she's like touching him a lot. She's like sliding his her hand up and down his chest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and later she grabs his ass. Yeah, like multiple times. Yeah, and when Sam notices them, when Sam notices Dean and Bella, he like goes over to them and says like, how long am I supposed to entertain my date? Which, like, okay, here's the thing. Why mm. does why did he need to have a date? Uh, I think they needed, well, because Gert is, like, rich and she actually had invitations to this event. Oh, so it's like she he's the plus one. Yeah. But, like, from from the looks of it, Sam didn't need to be there. Yeah, I mean, right? maybe she was, maybe she was, like, I'll, like, give you the invitations if, like, no. this hot piece of ass goes as my date. It's like, too bad. Yeah, which is highly unfortunate. D, like, makes a joke, like, he's playing hard to get. Look at him. He's playing hard to get. Yeah, also and says, goes, like, like, I want the details in the morning, which is such an... The yeah, because Sam says, say. you know there are limits to what I'll do, so, like, the joke is, like, I'm not gonna sleep with her for the case. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Right, I, but I feel like, well, the whole portrayal of her, I think, is, like, built out of the idea that, like, it's laughable for older women yeah. to view themselves as sexual or want sex because like like they're like this sexual harassment isn't serious because she's a harmless old woman and it's just funny yeah. for her to think that anyone could she be attracted to yeah. her yeah so right there's it's not it's not good not a fan yeah and anyway um as Dean leaves this scene is iconic. Yeah, Sam, God Sam is handed champagne and he like takes it and they cheers. And instead of sipping on it like you usually do champagne, he throws it back. Yeah. And one yeah. swallow. 
drinks the whole glass. And yeah. I remember this scene only because of, and I mean only because of the Profound Bond trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, which is such a but, yeah. I mean, media. this summer a man afraid of flying and a, an angel afraid of falling are gonna fall in love though. Well, they're gonna meet in the middle. It's the specific line. Ugh. Yeah, fully understood. <laughs> it's a it's a good fake fan trailer. Yeah, I mean, I think that was one of the very first fan-related things that I've ever watched mm. in my life. Like, yeah, my first was I the didn't have clicky AMV. Oh, for Supernatural, but you mean the first any fan thing. Yeah. Wow. Because uh, what happened was, like, I didn't have Tumblr, I didn't have Twitter, I didn't have any social media aside from YouTube. So, mm-hmm. like, I would go on YouTube and look up, like, clips of Castiel or something <laughs> watch them <laughs> and then like at videos some point, where I Castiel got... is my boyfriend and loves me so much <laughs> ASMR <laughs> and uh eventually like this showed up that the trailer showed up and I watched it and I was like that's super fun yeah so yeah it's right it's, yeah did you ship Castiel like as soon as like Cass showed up what was your journey there? That's interesting. I don't know. I mm. don't remember well enough. But I think, like, immediately I was... I remember feeling vindicated when I realized that many people shipped them. Yeah. I do remember that. Because, yeah. So, like, that implies... The vindication implies that I already shipped them prior. Yeah. And it was, like, a feeling of... Oh, everyone else sees what I'm seeing. But I don't Ooh. remember. I, I don't remember well enough. Yeah. So, we cut to Dean and Bella. And they're, like, off to the side trying to figure out how to get upstairs where the Hand of Glory is being kept. Um, The guards look very professional they're apparently state troopers um and yeah bella's like what do you suggest for us to get upstairs dean says i'm thinking and she says don't strain yourself so real uh and she says interesting how the legend is so much more than the man what channels do you think she heard about sam and dean through I don't, I don't know. I mean, they seem to be very famous everywhere. Yeah, though. but, like, I mean, whenever they're, whenever they're famous, it just seems to be, like, Bobby was bragging about his kids at the bar yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she goes to Hunter Bars. Yeah, maybe. So, Nadine's like, well, do you have any ideas? And Bella goes, Okay. And then she fake faints in his arms, and she's so fun for this. She's so fun and right for this. Um, yeah, so Dean does his whole fake dating thing where he's like, Honey, are you alright? Like, waiter, like, my wife... Or, it's like, so yeah. funny. No, it's so good. He says, Waiter, come over here. My wife has a severe shellfish allergy. There's no crab in that, is there? And the waiter says no, and Dean says no, and then he takes one and eats it. And he says, they're excellent, by the way. He's so, so funny. Also, like, the concept that this woman faints in the middle of uh, an event, and nobody comes to help. Like, they're all like, mm, okay. <laughs> yeah. I respect that. Yeah. Mind your own business. <laughs> Does Dean have a shellfish allergy? No. Okay, yeah, because I uh, do like. Okay, the implication being that he's like, he oh, my wife okay. has a shellfish allergy. So is there shellfish in that? No. Okay, and then he eats it. Yeah, like I was like, I mean, I think the implication is that he's looking for like a reason that Bella fainted, and then when it fails, he just eats the food that's in front of him. But I also like the idea that he just. 
literally just called Checks, the waiter yeah. over because he wanted to eat the food and just asked yeah. about the allergies. Yeah. Yeah. So a guard comes over and Dean's like, oh, you know, my wife is a lightweight when it comes to champagne. So, you know, she just randomly fainted in the middle of an event, which is how people react to drinking too much. Um, and then he asks if there's somewhere that he can lay her down before she, so that she can feel better. And the guard takes him upstairs. And Dean, yeah, Dean picks Bella up and carries her. Yeah, they should yeah. have had angry sex. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they end up in a room, and he, like, literally plops Bella down so I hard know. on the couch. And he says the yeah. rudest fucking thing. Yeah, she says, you think he's a pain in the ass, now try living with her. Imagine you're at an event, and a man's wife faints and this is what he says over her unconscious body i mean to be fair the it's the guard thinks that she's fucking someone else well, oh yeah later like, yeah no i think the guard is thinking good for her right <laughs> yeah anyway uh as the guard gets out bella wakes up in quotation marks and Dean says, next time, give me a little heads up with your plan. And Bella goes like, I didn't want you thinking about it. You're not very good at that. <laughs> I so love So real. So true. She's so and funny. Dean is, like, Dean is like standing there like glaring at her. And she goes, oh, look at you. Trying to think of a witty thing to say. <laughs> and Dean is like, screw you. <laughs> And then Bella, you know, says, like, oh, the thing is in room 235. It's on a locked glass case wired for alarm. I'm sure that won't be a problem. Which, like, for for a bit, I was like, oh, they're gonna do a thing where Dean gets caught or something. And, like, Bella has to save him or whatever because mm -hmm. it's a wired glass case. But no, he just no. gets it instantaneously. Yep. Yeah. He just gets it. So... We got to downstairs where poor Sam is there and he's dancing with Miss Case. Um, and Sam is not having a good time. That's about it. There's like no actual point to the scene in any way besides isn't sexual harassment funny. Um, so Dean gets the hand of glory out of the case, no problem. Um, and then a guard knocks on the door where Bella's at, and he's like, is everything okay? So, like, Bella, like, she, like, sort of, like, takes one of her dress straps down so that she can, like, pretend that she's, like, mid-fuck, um, when she yeah, answers the door. Yeah, and she smudges her lipstick. It's super fun. Yeah, yeah. It's very fun of her. And she's like, oh my god, um, hi, yeah, I'm feeling better, but, um, I'm not exactly done with the room yet. Can we have a few more minutes? He leaves. And then Bella starts making fake, like, giggling sounds that I guess are just, like, her version of sex sounds. Apparently she says, stop it, that tickles. Who, yeah. Who's doing this? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that she isn't fake moaning because, like, yeah, like, you wouldn't get back to fake moaning that fast after a guard <laughs> shows up. So, yeah, good for her. She's she's doing the build-up. She's, like, simulating the foreplay. Um, and the guard walks around the corner and he bumps right into Dean. Uh, and Dean's like, Oh, yeah, sorry, I was, like, in the bathroom, but thanks for looking after my wife. And the guard goes, oh, she's being looked after, all right? <laughs> God, this is so funny. I did like this part a lot. 
Dean shows Bella that he got the hand, and she asks to take it because it would fit in her purse better. And Dean's like, ah, uh, fuck no, and puts it in his pocket. Bella says she's trying to be helpful, and Dean says, like, inc incredibly condescendingly, like, well, sweetheart, I don't need your kind of help. What? I mean, I guess, like, like, I guess by now, like, probably this whole time that he has suspect- Well, okay, no, see, like, I feel like we all know that she is not here to save people, she's here for this artifact. But, like, Sam and Dean seem genuinely, like, surprised and upset when they're like, and this whole time you were just manipulating us to get into the event? So why is he being so rude? Well, I mean, I think it's like, he's more angry at the fact that she was able to steal than, you know, the actual stealing. Mm. Okay, so yeah, so you think that he does know that this is just what she's yeah, after yeah, yeah. already. Okay. That tracks. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Anyway, back downstairs, Gert and Sam are still dancing. And mm. she's still doing the thing, groping him, blah, blah, blah. But she starts talking about the Warren brothers and, like, how they got it coming in the biblical sense. And Sam's like, oh, what, what's that supposed to mean? And apparently, the father was, like, that was killed by the boys. Yeah. And and um Sam asks like if Sheila had any connection to them and she says, No, none of that. But she had a tragedy in her life where when she was a teenager she got into a car accident and her cousin died in it. Right. This was so unclear like so like, Sheila... Okay, first of all, who intentionally kills their cousin? What has a cousin ever done? No, I think it's like... Killing? It's not intentional. Okay. That makes sense. It's just... Just she was yeah. driving the car badly. Yeah. Well, if it could have been an accident, then why are Sam and Dean immediately so judgmental of Bella when she says of she's Bella. seen the ship? Like, that implies that it had to be, like, on-purpose murder, right? Yeah. Also, no. killing someone I think they're just judgmental. Okay, yeah, they're just mean. Yeah, because yeah. I was trying to figure out the mechanics of murder via car accident where you're also in the car, and I don't think that's- I think that's way too risky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway... Yeah. Anyway, um, Bella and Dean arrive, and Bella is st starts talking to Gert, and Gert is like, he wants me. And Bella's like, okay, let's take you home now. And Sam and Dean head to the car. Mm -hmm. Oh, before that, like, Dean tells Sam, you stink like sex, which, again... The episode is trying to be funny. Yeah, Sam asks about the hand. He calls Ms. Case Mrs. Havisham, who is a character in Great Expectations, who got left at the altar and then wore her wedding dress for the rest of her life. Um, so yeah, I think it's just like old woman who thinks she has a chance but is just obsessed with the idea of getting a man or something, whatever. Um, yeah, and he's like, yeah, I totally got this hand. Um, and he takes the handkerchief that he had the hand wrapped in out of his pocket, and he unwraps it, and it's like a ship in a bottle. It is not the hand. And he goes, I'm gonna kill her. Meanwhile, in Bella's car, she is looking at a box with, like, a millions of dollars in it, and she flips through the money, she looks great, she's doing so well, 
And then she looks out in the distance and she goes, oh no. And the ship is there. She goes into Sam and Dean's room and Sa- Dean is talking about like, I'm not going to kill her. I think I'm just going to slow torture her. Mm. And <laughs> yeah. Mm. They're super upset that Bella, as they say, got one over us. Which Sam corrects us. No, 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 no. She got one over you. You didn't get one over me. And Dean is like, oh my fucking god, Sam. And a knock, a knock comes and it's Bella. Yeah. I mean, and she's, it's very urgent. Yeah. I do appreciate that in the two episodes that she's in, it's like, cringe fail thief is unable to complete her thievery due to, like, the cursed object cursing her. I yeah. wish- it is fun. I like- I like when women are a little bit pathetic. She explains what happened, which is that she sold the thing. hmm And, of course, Sam and Dean are mad. And he's like, the whole reason for the charity ball was, yeah, a cover- Blah blah blah, and you guys were convenient. Yeah. And Sam is like, just go buy it back then. And Bella says, like, it's already halfway across the ocean. We don't have the time. And they're like, it time for what? And she reveals that she did saw the ship. And mm-hmm. and Dean is like, oh wow, <gasps> I thought you were just a thieving immoral person. He's Turns a moral thieving con artist bitch. Oh my god. Yeah. And then he's like, just when I thought that you couldn't get any lower than this. And Bella's like, what are you talking about? And they say what's happening, which is that um, people who kill family members are the target of the thing. Because the guy who was tried for treason and killed, his brother was... The captain who yeah. tried him and ordered his execution. Mm. So yeah, they were brothers, Cain and Abel. Yeah, he literally references Cain and Abel. God bless. Uh, yeah, I like. And Dean is like, so who was it, Bella? Who'd you kill? Was it Daddy? Was it your little sister? He's so annoying. He's so fucking annoying, especially when I mean, hasn't he actually... learned? Yeah, hasn't he learned? Because, like, this also happened that one time he was like, why did you sell your fucking soul? Was it to yeah. be a selfish con to marry your wife? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. For her to like you? And then the guy is like, no, she had cancer and I wanted her to live. And yeah. he is like... <gasps> I mean, like, haven't you learned from that, Dean? That Dean people are not never as evil as you think they anything are. anything ever in his entire life. It's yeah, so annoying. yeah. I did, I did like, cause okay, like earlier in the episode when like the three of them are working together on the case, Sam's being like, "Well, we need to figure out the ghost's motivation. We need to figure out the ghost's backstory." And Bella's like, "Oh, I know his backstory. It's who fucking cares? Let's just go and get the hand." Um. So like, mm. I like that it's like, like. Both of them, like, both groups of people on this case fucked up at points like Sam and Dean fucked up by not looking at the bigger picture and being focused on saving that one guy that they couldn't save. Bella fucked up by not, like, looking at the backstory of the ghost and just focusing on the profit motive. So, like, I mean, my point is that they should all, that she should join Team Free Will and they should all work together all the time and they should stop being mean to her. But, you know, it's not going to happen. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, um, Bella says, it's not of your business. And she kept saying that nobody understands. Nobody understood back then. Nobody understands now. And they try to leave her. To die. And Dean is like, and she's like, you can't just leave me. And Dean is like, oh, I thought we were serial killers. He's so annoying. I'm so sorry. I know this is, like, quite... I mean, is it a reasonable response? I 
I I would find this more reasonable if what he called back to was her saying, oh, that one guy is, like, cannon fodder anyway, so you should just focus yeah. on getting the hand. Like, if they're like, okay, well, like, if you think that all these collateral, collateral deaths don't matter, then, like, we'll just leave you and get the hand. But, like... I think, like, like you've still, ha you've had multiple conversations with this woman. You, like, does your fake dating mean nothing to you? Also, like, it makes his anger at her so personal. Yeah. Instead of what he's trying to insist, which is it's a moral thing. Yeah. Like, suddenly it's not a moral thing. It's just that she said something mean to you about yeah. you. Yeah. I guess, like, well, I guess he was more like, oh, like, I thought you thought that, like, hunting and hunters were cringe and fail. So why are you asking for help in the way that we provide help? But yeah, it's fucking annoying. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Sam figures out the way that they can save her life. Dun dun dun! Yeah. Wow, that's a variation of our typical dungeon. It is a variation. Fun. A remix, if you will. Right. Also, like, Bella, like, literally apologizes, right? She says, like, that was a bit harsh. Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't warrant a death sentence. And, yeah. I don't, like... She's just, she's like, she, I like her very much. I don't even think she needed to apologize for that, but she did. And also, like, before Sam offers to help, like, she's about to head out. She goes, like, I'll just do what I've always done. I'll deal with it myself. And I don't know, that coupled with, like, you wouldn't understand, no one understood, even back then, makes me sad, because it's, like, that implies that, like, she had, like, friends and stuff when she was, like, a child and she tried to open up to one of them about her parents' abuse and how she killed them and they were just like, ew, get away from me. You know? Ugh. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bella. You will always be famous and I'm gonna miss you after this season ends. So, they're in a graveyard and Sam's setting some stuff up. There's like a pentagram and like candles and shit um yeah and Bella's afraid and like this sudden like rainstorm starts happening so that Bella is wet and pathetic as all women ought to be sometimes uh and Sam starts reading Latin and the second yeah. word that he says is Castiel! It's yeah. Cass. It's Cass. He's here. That's my boy. He's literally right here. God, yeah. So, he does this whole incantation. Um, it's raining really hard. There's a lot of wind. Um, uh, and the ghost sailor appears. And just throws Dean in the air and then he starts drowning Bella by putting a hand on her face and she starts coughing up water and yeah the ghost does not go after Sam at all even though Sam is the one who is doing the incantation that might defeat him so what Sam has done is apparently summon the spirit of the ghost's brother um by is, are we assuming this incantation they're in the graveyard so is he like raising this brother from his grave yeah yes so. yeah you can just do that like with anyone <laughs> like, i don't fucking know bro <laughs> <laughs> like do they ever do this again N i don't think so or i just this just seems like a useful thing. Like, you can summon literally anyone from the dead, even if they didn't die as- I mean, maybe the brother is still a ghost. But, like, sort of- like, I feel like we would've, we would've seen him around if he was a ghost earlier, too, right? 
Like, I feel like he wasn't a ghost. So, like, he was in heaven or hell. And then he... Sam yoinked him out? Yeah. I... If Sam can do this, like, what is even, like... Why do they even bother on anything. cases? Like, why doesn't he do the Ace Attorney thing where he, like, can, where he just communes <laughs> with the dead and asks what killed you? Yeah, well, according to Ace Attorney, that doesn't really work too well, so... Oh, fair. Yeah, Sam was like, I know, I know this neat new trick and I'm gonna use it, and then he played all of Ace Attorney so that he could be better friends with you, and then he was like, I guess I'm not gonna use this <laughs> trick anymore. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So, the brother, he shows up, and he just looks like a regular guy, cause like this, the original ghost, like he has like straggly hair and like he's like wet and rain soaked and drowned. But this other guy looks like he like works in an office and has like a four hundred one k. So, he shows up, and the ghost is like, you killed me, and the brother's like, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry. Um, and then original ghost charges into his brother, and sort of like, as soon as he hits him, like, the place where he hits him, like, becomes like a water splash, and as he goes like, through him, like, they both, like, dissolve in, like, water. And, I don't know, I thought that was kind of neat because I feel like ghosts usually die by a fire and it looks silly. And this looked, this looked better than the fire, at least. And Bella's okay now! Yay! Yay! So, we go to back to the room where Sam and Dean are squatting and Bella comes in and she's like you should you, you guys should lock your door <laughs> and then she throws money at them yep so a whole wad of cash yeah and apparently it's yeah you think it's for both of them I think it's 10,000 each damn yeah and Dean is like wow Oh, well, she says first that Bella says that she's paying them because she doesn't like owing people things. So that about covers it, right? Mm-hmm. And Dean is like, wow, you'd rather pay 10 grand than to say thank you. You're so damaged. And Bella goes, thanks one to no one. <laughs> yeah. I love them. Yeah. Anyway, she says goodbye, lads, which I love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Sam is like, she got style. You gotta give her that. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Why do I keep voicing Sam like this? I'm so mean. <laughs> and Sam says, like, we don't know where this money's been, though. And Dean says, no, but I know where it's going. Yep. Then they go to the car. And what's Atlantic City mean? Um, it's, like, somewhere in... Is it in New Jersey? I think it's, like... I think it's, like... It's, like, East Coast Las Vegas or something. Or maybe South... It's in New Jersey. Atlanta is in Georgia, and that is in the South, but Atlantic City. Okay, so it's a resort city in New Jersey. Um, so I think it's, like, Are you sure? Atlantic City? Yeah, I'm sure. So there's I a think lot of maybe I'm thinking there. of Atlanta. Yeah, you're I'm thinking, thinking of Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, they're gonna go to a casino. And Dean goes, um, actually, I just want to tell you that I understand why you're doing the thing with the crossroads. I understand why you went after her. If the situation was reversed, I would have done the same thing. He literally did do the same thing. That's what got them in this situation. Yeah, and he says, I see what you're going through with this whole deal. Me going away and all that. But you're gonna be okay. 
And Sam is like, oh, you think so? Like, rather, you know, like, mm-hmm. out of life. Yeah. And Dean is like, yeah, you'll be fine. You'll hunt, you know, you'll live your life. You're stronger than me. And then he goes like, you'll get over it. But I want you to know that I'm sorry for putting you through all of this shit. Yeah, which and this is Sam his first like, actual apology for this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam is like, F- go fuck yourself. Like, this is such a terrible ass apology. And besides, I don't want an apology from you. And I can take care of myself. Like, the point he's making is like, I know I'm going to be fine. That's not the point. The point is like, you keep on worrying about me and that's what led us here in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, and he says, like, I don't want you to worry about me. I want to worry about you. I want you to give a crap that you're dying. Yeah. And that's pretty much the end of the episode. They have, oh. like, a little banter where Dean is like, um, I'll just play their scraps or something. Yeah. I'll just play like a Russian roulette. <laughs> no, he like he says like I'll just go to the casino or something. Yeah, and... I think. Well, he says I'll play craps, which is a casino game, which I think is his response to Sam saying, "Give a crap that you're dying." He's like, "I don't give a crap that I'm dying, but I'll play the game of craps." I don't think it counts yeah. as banter if Sam is like glaring straight ahead the entire time. <laughs> That's just what banter with me is like. <laughs> Haven't you heard? Oh, so you play D and D? Yeah, like D and D. Yeah, So that's the end of the episode. I did like this mm-hmm. last scene. I, I liked pretty much. I liked a lot of the episode. Yeah. I also liked a lot of the episode. Like, there were moments that I did not like at all. But, yeah, Yeah. overall, I think Bella is such a good character. She adds so much to their dynamic by being... Can you imagine how fucking boring this episode would be if it was just Sam and Dean? And it's just like, oh, there's a ship and there's a ghost guy on the ship. Like, who give a single shit? (laughs) Yeah, what's your best line? Oh, shit. Um. Ah. I mean, I like a lot of the ending scene. I guess. I I would say I like like the line about, like, your daddy gave you enough hugs and Bella replies, what, your daddy didn't? Mm. I think that's, like, you know, it's foreshadowing. Yeah. Also, it's, it's, like, that that you know that kind of like banter shows you that Bella does see true Dean, mm-hmm. and like she can see what he's like. Yeah, and like it, like that kind of acknowledgement of like knowing who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. Prov- I know it's not gonna lead anywhere, but it provides this feeling of they understand each other. Yeah. And that's that's fun. It is fun. Yeah. Right, I guess I'll just go with the, like, I don't want you to worry about me, Dean. I want you to worry about you. I want you to give a crap that you're dying thing. Because, yeah. yeah, I feel like this scene is the first time either of them are, like, fully voicing a lot of the tensions that yeah, yeah. have been going on throughout season three. And... I don't know. It's it's a good time. My worst line is the thigh massage line. Yeah. That is also my worst, worst line. I did have to pause the episode for a few minutes. Uh, misogyny. There was misogyny. Racism. There was one moment of racism. I'd say... I think, oh, let's do one, one point for racism. Yeah, and then I'd say misogyny maybe two... Yeah. Yeah. Like, Gert's whole thing, not a fan. Yeah, Gert's whole characterization. 
Yeah. And also, they're just extra mean to Bella, they're I just feel. so mean Like, to if Bella. this was a guy, I feel like there would be, like, a little more, like, oh, we respect him for what he is. Right. I, you know what I mean? Like, maybe I'm wrong, but that's the vibe. Yeah. I feel like that is probably the vibe. But, yeah, I don't know. What are, are there a lot of evil men that we've met? Gordon. Um, that's true. That's true. I mean, they're, they are worse to Gordon than they are to Bella. At least they don't tie <laughs> yeah, Bella they don't, up and yeah. leave her. In her own piss for like a week, but I do think I think if like I think a white man would probably be treated a lot better than Bella is. Okay, I am DB rating. What's our rating for this app? Huh? Like I like it, but I know that Bella was controversial. Like her presence in the show was controversial way back then, so it's hard to know how it's gonna shake out. So I'm gonna just go with like a. 8.5? You know what? I'm gonna go a bit higher than you. Okay. I'll say 8.7. Alright. Okay, let's check. Holy shit! What? 8.0. Oh, no! Really? They hate Bella that much? Devastating. I, it's not a bad episode. Like, there are moments. But, like, overall, like, I had a fun time. I know we opened this episode being very, very negative about this episode, but now I'm very upset. Oh, okay, let's see what Wait people long. are saying. Yeah? Apparently, Eric Kripke apologized for this episode in Monster at the end of this book. Wait, what? Because it's you? bad. What did he say about it? Wait, what? I don't know. This one can't stand Bella. Oh, boo. You, sorry, this first review said the worthless but sexy Bella Talbot. <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> and they also call her the despicable Bella. What? Yeah. Who are you? Who this one like says. This? Yeah. I can't stand her. Her character annoys me like hell so much that I have almost a problem watching the scenes she's in. I like Joe because although she's a bit of a stereotype, the actress was able to fill that character with some sort of life. Bella doesn't seem like a real person, rather like some kind of farce. She's the perfect example for the current problem of the show: a total lack of heart. Okay. I I mean, maybe we are attributing more depth to her than she's been shown so far in season three because yeah, we know because about we her know backstory her. and about the demon deal. But I also think that the but hints But this is for a these, retrospective show. Yeah, and the hints for these <laughs> things, like, have been dropped throughout. Like, we're all going to hell, so, like, just have fun with the ride and, like, her... Like, clearly, like, they're setting something up with, like, the death of her family members. So, like, I don't think she completely lacks heart. And I think it's clear that, like, she's putting on an act when she's acting like not a real person because we see her at more vulnerable places in this episode. So I don't get it. Yeah. Okay, at least yeah. this person said that just watched it and was taken with Bella. She will add much to the series. So true. You're right. I, I, You're so I respect real. no one but you. Okay, so that's it for this episode of Bustation Beauties. Next week, we will be discussing Season 2, Episode 7, Fresh Blood. Oh, no. Do we have to? <laughs> what if I did it? Was a rating on... <laughs> well, Sarah Gamble is at it again. Leave us a rating or review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at bustationbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, babpod, and thank you to everyone who's donated to our ko at ko-fi.com slash bustationbeautiespod. 
You can leave us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustationbeautyspot at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, what I'm gonna say is the like the first part of this sentence made me laugh, like the hand of glory part, because I'm gonna cut this out. So okay. uh like I've been reading like DGS fanfiction and as you know DGS right. is set in the Meiji era slash Victorian uh-huh. era. Right. And apparently during that time it's a common phrase to like bring someone to their glory. <laughs> which means like to make someone come, which I think is so fun. And I'll start using that. Honestly, so real. We better start bringing that back. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that's still a thing. Like people call. Like I think. Never mind. I read that in Sherlock Holmes, Arthur Conan Doyle fan fiction. Let's move on <laughs> with our lives. <laughs> what is it? What is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> What is it? What? Oh, what no. It? I think afternoon glory and morning glory were phrases they used to refer to morning sex and afternoon sex. Yeah, I think I think that's just how it is during that time period. Yeah. When was ACD, Sh- uh, ACD Holmes written? I keep on saying Sholmes because I'm so used to it. Now. Yeah. Huh, yeah, let me check Wait, when, when the Scarlet... Or, sorry. Study in Scarlet. Yeah, Study in Scarlet was published. Oh my god! I what? need you to play the GS! <laughs> I need someone to play the GS! It was published in 1887. Ah, okay, got it. So, yeah, that's it's set around that time. Mm. Anyway... Anyway. Uh, what am I? I'm so sorry. My, my iPad notified me <laughs> about that. a tweet of mine that someone liked. Uh-huh. And the tweet reads, I need a bisexual man. Open close parenthesis. She long lang. In my life. Open close parenthesis. Pussy. What the <laughs> <point? What? laughs> You should keep that in. <laughs> God. I'm gonna put it at the end of the episode.